Tagum Maguete. Hello, Negros Oriental. Hello, Silimanians around the world. This is Joshua Soldivillo. And this is Ronnie Lynn Faith by Losses. Welcome to Hashtag Siliman. For Hashtag Siliman update, Siliman University congratulates the 836 graduates including 242 recipients of Latin honors from its institutes, schools, and colleges for the 109th commencement held last June 12 to 13, 2022 in a limited face-to-face -face setting at the Siliman University Gym and to be and live streamed via the Silliman University Facebook and YouTube pages. Among the Latin Honor recipients, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture graduate Jose Paolo Echavez is the only graduate who earned summa cum laude distinction, while 87 earned magna cum laude and 155 earned cum laude. The Silman University High School class of 1973 recently exceeded its 1 million endowment goal for the SUHS 1973 Junior High School Scholarship. They raised a total of 1,142,480 pesos for the endowment with 29,232 pesos available for scholarships in the coming school year. The campaign originally set for 500,000 pesos was announced during the 45th class reunion in 2018. By 2019, the goal was exceeded, so they increased the endowment goal to 1 million pesos. The Office of Information and Publications of Silliman University is hiring one editorial technical assistant. For those who are interested, please submit an application letter, updated resume with pertinent documents and certificate of COVID-19 vaccination issued by the City Health Office. For more information, please visit the official Facebook page of Silliman University. That would be all. See you next week for another set of Hashtag Silliman Updates. Good evening everyone! This is a magazine program that talks about different aspects of Silliman University. A program initiated to discuss matters concerning the campus by the sea. Welcome to Hashtag Silliman! Mayong gabi isa tanan, thank you for watching Hashtag Silliman and making us your Monday night habit. And we would like to give our loudest shout out to the graduates of this year, class 2022. And of course, uh, shout out as well to our proud parents, energetic faculty and staff. And I know it's very emotional for you guys because this is the time that you're going to meet. And at the same time, you're going to, you know, part ways. But as they say, in every beginning, there's always an end. But the good news is in every end, it ushers a new beginning. And speaking of beginning here in Silliman University, we're also ushering academic year 2022 to 2023. And for this episode, we'll be dedicating it in discussing the updates and plans for the next year in the two top performing colleges and institutes in the university. I'm talking about the Institute of Clinical Laboratory Sciences and the College of Nursing. Joining us tonight are the forerunners of the said college and institute. Allow me to introduce first the Dean of the College of Nursing, Dr. Teresa Ginomam. Good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening, Josh. We also have here with us a student, actually a fresh graduate, and she graduated cum laude. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Celine May B. Villones. Thank you, ma'am. Congratulations Thank you. and welcome to the program. And of course, we have the director of the Institute of Clinical Laboratory mm -hmm. Sciences. We have Director Evelyn Fajardo. Director Fajardo, good evening and welcome good to the evening, program. Good evening, Josh. Good evening. We also have here with us tonight the MedTech Society Advisor and the member of the Admissions Committee of ICLS. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Leo Teofane Cinco. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. All right. So, of course, I'll, I'll give some of our airtime to the Dean of College of Nursing, Ron, to say some words of congratulations our fresh graduates and, of course, proud parents and faculty and staff. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, uh, thank you. Congratulations to my 144 wow. graduates, the first batch in the new CMO 15 wow. curriculum mm. and the first graduates from the K-12. to Wow. And we are so excited for them. And we also had uh, 27 uh, cum laude graduates wow. this year. Yes, and uh, kudos to the very dynamic team of College of Nursing faculty and staff. Without them, it was really so hard. 
but we were able to face the challenges of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, even when we pivoted to flexible learning, right. we were still able to make it. And so we are uh, happy that um, after the board exams, we will be able to provide additional uh, workforce to our healthcare industry. Yes, how about you, Celine? Uh, what, what's on your mind right now? How, what's the feeling? How do you feel about this? That finally you're graduating after two years of ODL yeah. and here you are, no, graduating in person. Actually, it still feels so surreal to be one of the few um, graduates. Oh, there are a lot of us actually who graduated cum laude and it feels, uh, it's such an honor and a privilege to be graduating in nursing, the College of Excellence. And uh, to be one of the first face-to-face -face college, college commencement exercises mm -hmm. in Siliman University as the first pi a pioneering batch of K-12. So wow. Mm -hmm. It's still surreal to this think about it. This is a historic <laughs> batch run, no? Yeah. 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 Um, I'd like to ask Mom Evelyn, um, do you have graduates now? in this month or are you going to have the graduation the graduation ceremony for the mid year and for the uh, regular year this year they will be graduating this coming mid year because mm -hmm. this is the first batch who graduated in the K12 uh, K12 program mm -hmm. and their new internship uh, curriculum demands mm -hmm. a a total of a, a year experience. So they will be finishing this coming mid-year and we they will be graduating this coming July, I think 31. Wow. Okay, so there are a total of 195 mm -hmm. graduates and we are expecting 66 Latin honors from this batch. Wow, another, another work in progress later on for the preparation for the board exam. But before we talk about that, I just want to get also the feeling and uh, the heart of our one of our faculty members in the university, uh, Mr. Leo. Sir Leo, um, how does it feel that finally, you know, our academic um, status as far as the COVID-19 protocol is concerned is getting a little bit, you know, um, easier, smoother, and we're now seeing students in campus. How does it feel, sir? Actually, I'm very happy in terms of the um, improvement uh, in our learning modalities. Uh, uh, it's really uh, a great challenge for both teachers and students uh, to really endure the online distance learning for mm -hmm. the past two years, especially in medical technology that our subjects are somehow, it requires uh, skills. It's mm, a, it's a skills-based right. subject. So yeah. we really have a challenging time delivering it online. Mm. So I'm very happy right now that we are now step-by-step uh, -step, um, 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 preparing mm. for our face-to-face -face classes. Mm. So much about the present, Josh, and so much about the recent activities that we concluded yeah. last, um, I think it was June 14, 13, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, but yeah. Um, let me ask Dr. Um, Ginoo, um, going back or going back to the memory lane, how old is the College of Nursing and can you share an interesting historical event of the college? Yeah. Uh, okay, so we just celebrated our 75th college week. Wow. wow. So we are 75 years, years old. Wow. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Ever since the 1980s, we have already um, been awarded uh, with, with accolades because of the excellent performance mm -hmm. of the College of Nursing. Um, we started with a four-year curriculum that turned out to be a five-year curriculum and was again transformed into a four-year curriculum. So there has been a lot of changes mm -hmm. in our curricular offerings and mostly because of the demands of healthcare right. and the realities in society. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is also interesting to note that um, the College of Nursing graduates have performed excellently in board exams mm -hmm. and um, no pressure, Celine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we have also produced a lot of top notchers mm -hmm. um, from our graduates. Mm -hmm. But over and above that, one thing I would like to tell um, the group now is 
we do have programs that augment the leadership mm, of the okay. College of Nursing, not just in academics, mm. but also in uh, leadership training. So we have um, this, uh, this uh, program of leadership excellence in nursing uh, in our university, which is housed in the College of Nursing as well. Mm. How about in the Institute of Clinical uh, Laboratory Sciences, uh, Director Fajardo, mm. how old <laughs> is the Institute? And um, Dr. Aguino earlier mentioned about being a center of excellence while your Institute is a center of development. What does this mean as well? Um, the Institute is already old. No? Uh, the program, the initial program was introduced in 1970. Wow. And we're supposed to, you know, <laughs> celebrate our 50th, mm -hmm. but that was during the height of the, the pandemic, pandemic in 2020. Okay. So we were not actually able to, you know, gather around mm -hmm. with the alumni and also with the students no, with that face to face. But of course, we are now planning <laughs> to yes. celebrate it, yeah. not the 50th, but maybe the, the next, mm -hmm. no, maybe the right. 55th or the, 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 the 60th anniversary. Now, the institute has been passed on from one <laughs> college to another. Okay, that's an no, interesting So we started history. in the College of Arts and Sciences under the biology program. Okay. And then it's, it's already BS Medical Technology, now right from the mm -hmm. start. Mm -hmm. And then we were moved and placed under the umbrella of the College of Nursing. Okay. Uh, so and it then used to be, uh, <laughs> yes. used to be part, okay. yeah, under the College of Nursing and Allied Health Sciences. Yes. No? And then it was just in 29, 29 that we became an institute. And now the BS Medical Technology Program is offered under the Institute oh. of Clinical Laboratory Sciences. And since 2016, we were given by CHED a, 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 we became the, the center of development in Central Visayas. And in Central Visayas, we are the only center of development wow. for the medical technology education. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, is an advantage also. I mean, yeah. that's, that's really a gem mm -hmm. no, for, the, for the institute. Okay, let's talk about misconception and prejudices. And I'd like to address this question to our fresh graduate here. Yeah. So what were the mis common misconceptions you hear when you first enrolled in the College of Nursing? Um, actually, before I entered the college as a student, I admit that I um, had a view before that nurses were just like, Sunud sunuran, or mm. we, we, we wouldn't be able to function well without the orders of the doctors okay. or the physicians. Mm. But I was really wrong about that because when I entered, um, I witnessed that the bulk of what we do in the hospitals or even in the community is more on the independent nursing interventions that we have mm. been trained to do, like the skills mm -mm. that we have to think critically to do. And also, a second misconception is. Um, that we work independently or um, oh, like there is a segmented healthcare division in the, in the hospital but in reality there is this you'd be amazed of the, how the dynamics work in the multidisciplinary healthcare team where we have team. to work together mm -hmm. with the doctors, the nutritionists and dietitians, the radiologists to give the best quality and safe care for our patients. And the third misconception that I had as a student is that when we graduate, we'd only be working in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. But I was also wrong about that okay. because when we graduate, there are a lot of areas where we can enter in, like in entrepreneurship, um, the academe, mm. as well as in psychiatric facilities, and lots more. Wow. So, as a student, the misconceptions, other misconceptions that I heard was that nursing was expensive. Mm -hmm. But um, when I consider the, the privileges that we have in the college when we are given time at, to work with our high fidelity simulation ro robots, which are yeah. just few in, in our region, mm -hmm. and also the simulation laboratories, 
I think it's really worth the the price for our tuition, which is relatively cheaper actually from the other colleges, okay. College of Nursing in the area as well. And also that I also heard that many people would think that we wouldn't have a social life and that <laughs> and nurses were just life. Um, that's for another topic. <laughs> 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 that we'll be buried in our academics, but right. actually, there we we have to find that balance. Uh, so you manage. Life. Yes, and, we have yeah, to manage. I think it's it's really an authentic testament of our student. But from a fresh graduate, let's go to a fresh uh, med tech <laughs> society <laughs> advisor. What are the common uh, misconceptions or misguided impressions about the course and profession, sir? Um, actually. Uh, there have been a lot of misconceptions regarding medical technologies. Number one, we always hear uh, these terms, tikuha arag dugo. Ah, especially okay. when we are working in the hospital. <laughs> oh, like, tikuha arag dugo or tikolek sa urine samples or stool mm -hmm. samples. But we go beyond that, actually. We go beyond specimen collection. We actually process your specimen. We uh, do uh, different tests, such as microscopic examination, to identify um, um, potential uh, problems that might help in the diagnosis of patient disease. And also another uh, misconception is that uh, the profession is, a lot of people are not quite familiar about the work of a medical technologist. Mm -hmm. Usually, uh, in the hospital, they also vision us as nurses. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they also vision as nurses, like um, uh, uh, like they don't they they don't have that knowledge on what is really the work in the, of the medtech because most of the time we spend working inside the laboratory. Mm. We uh, our time lang to go out is when we do our uh, warding or blood collection or specimen collection. Mm -hmm. Then after that, we go back to the laboratory and work again. So how about the social life that Celine is? Is that also a well, <laughs> It's actually... That love life can be accommodated? There should always be work-life balance, okay. I believe. Yeah. There should always be put time for work and you also put time for your personal life. Right. Mm. So much about misconception, no? this misguided um, information or knowledge about these you know, health sciences. I'd like to ask in a nutshell, what is nursing and what is medical technology? Let's start with Dean Ginoo. Um, if I were to describe nursing, nursing is about caring for persons mm -mm. and caring in a way that takes into consideration the uniqueness and the becoming of every person. Mm -mm. So nurses are here because there are times when persons need care mm -mm. for them to be able to um, enjoy life as it should be. Okay. It is not simply about having disease or not having a disease, mm -mm. Mm -mm. but enjoying life because health cannot be only described physically, mm -mm. but it takes into consideration everything about the person. Mm -mm. So um, nursing is being able to assist this person um, with respect to uh, culture considerations as well. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. And uh, you can actually function in different uh, clinical settings mm -mm. and even in communities. And uh, nurses are very strong workforce uh, in healthcare. Mm -hmm. And I cannot imagine healthcare without nurses at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so everybody actually probably encountered the care of a nurse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. Director Fardo, we're just going to take a break, but you'll be answering mm -hmm. the same question. At the same time, we'll be discussing about what are the highlights of the student life of being a medic student, being a nursing student. Silim Hashtag Silliman will be back. Stay with us.
Welcome back. You're still watching Hashtag Silliman. Before we took a break, we actually asked Director Fajardo about what is medical technology, especially that uh, Sir Leo here um, shared to us that you are sometimes uh, confused with nurse. being a nurse. <laughs> All right. So, um, Director Fajardo, what is medical technology about, uh, you know, in as concise as possible, what is medtech? Um, medical technology is actually considered to be the core, the center of like if we if we look at the hospital setting is the central part of the operation in the hospital because mm -hmm. if if i'm referring to the med techs work in the laboratory mm -hmm. because the laboratory is very essential not only in the study of the patient's disease or condition but also it contributes a lot to the diagnosis to the management of the patient, mm -hmm. including the alleviation of the present condition of the patient to restore health in general, mm -hmm. okay? But the work of the medical technology as an auxiliary branch of laboratory medicine is very comprehensive. Now, we might not be, or medical technologists might not be into patient's bedside mm -mm. work, excluding only when we get samples from the patient, but the work is very comprehensive that we have to analyze the sample from the patient. The doctor is waiting there for the results so that the doctor can make a diagnosis. And aside from that, we do not only also work in the lab. Mm -hmm. no. We go beyond the you know, area in the lab. No, that's why there are many people who would see a med tech as limited mm. uh, opportunity for work. But if you try to dig deeper, we can fit in into different areas of life. Mm -hmm. no? We can fit in. We do have public health. We can work in the, in the BPOs. We can work in as, as, as analysts, mm -hmm. we can work in industries. There are many opportunities for a medical technology because we have various orientations. We orient the students in the discipline, mm -hmm. no? in different aspects of life. Right. So going back to Joshua's um, question a while ago, what are the highlights of being a nursing student? And I think this can be best answered by, by our fresh grad. Um, when you talk about highlights, there are actually a lot to choose from in nursing. As a nursing student, we undergo a lot of training. First, we undergo um, fundamentals, the basics of theories in nursing, and then we have this ceremony we call a candle lighting ceremony. This, is, uh, this precedes our wearing of the blue scrubs before we get exposed to the hospital, the community. So we are exposed in different clinical rotations such as the labor room delivery room, operating room, surgical, medicine, obigaini, postpartum. It's really very vast and wide. But I believe that the majority of my highlights as Your favorite. my favorite, yeah. I think it's the meaningful interactions with my patients mm -hmm. that I have experienced and took care of, especially when I hear the, their words of gratitude when we when I terminate the contract, okay. when I have to, um, it, when it was the last day of oh. our duties, I think as a sentimental and emotional person, okay. <laughs> I, I get attached to people yeah, really the very well. Yeah. yeah, and I, I, I go in a, a personal and heart level yeah. when I take care of them. And it really means a lot to me when they thank me personally for the care that I have given to them. So... Yeah, and also the bond and the family that we have created with my CI. So in, in nursing, we have the CI group. Mm -hmm. There are a lot, uh, maybe like 10, around 10 to 12 of us with our advisor, which we call a clinical instructor. Mm -hmm. And we are, the, we, we are each other's companions when we rotate in different um, areas. So it's the bond and the family that we have created. I think that's also one of the highlights that I can say. Yeah. I mean, congratulations to the College of Nursing for providing a really an authentic, uh, that's mm -hmm. the word for this, mm -hmm. an authentic 
environment for learning. How about for our fresh advisor, <laughs> from fresh, fresh graduate, <laughs> fresh advisor? Kind of <laughs> uh, what are the highlights, sir, as the advisor of the uh, student council of yes. the medical uh, technology students? Um, reminiscing when I am still a medtech student, I think uh, one of the best highlight is to be able to see. Uh, beyond our naked eyes because of course uh, um, we are uh, dealing with um, laboratory techniques uh, we are uh, handling equipment such as microscope which gives mm -hmm. us the opportunity to really examine your sample to, re to really see what is the problem in your blood or your, your urine I think that's one of the highlight of being a medtech student as well and also um, a college life is also best experience when you are also engaging yourself to extracurricular activities right. mm -hmm. like uh, that's the, that's the purpose of having the medical technology society uh, we actually uh, give um, students with opportunity mm -hmm. or avenue to show their talents their capabilities uh, we participate in the different university activities such as the Hibalag uh, mm -hmm. week as well as we also have our college week. So th somehow it gives uh, students um, time for uh -huh. relaxation over academics. Nice, wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, aside from experiences and moments, I do believe that some things are, the things that you should not forget, of course, are the principles, the concepts, the theories, you know, and the knowledge that you learn from your respective colleges. Now, I'd like to ask this question to Dean Gino. How can we use the principles, concepts, and theories in nursing in addressing current issues, like, for example, issues on environmental concerns, public health, and whatnot? Okay, so nursing is uh, is a science, and we always value evidence. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And so, when we think of the environment, it's not only the physical environment, but the social environment as well. Right. Mm -mm. And we think about social justice in relation to the environment. Mm -mm. And there are so many social realities nowadays that result from. Uh, poor environmental management and health care is uh, going to be challenged with all these um, social problems that are being observed. Um, one of uh, the challenge now in the recent pandemic is being able to convince people that you need to have a vaccination. Mm -mm that COVID is real, mm -hmm. yeah. and we have to um, be the voice against a lot of social media disseminating fake news, mm -hmm. because we have to listen to evidence, look mm -hmm. at evidence, for the protection and safety of people. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the very important principles that we, we follow in nursing. We do not just provide care without thinking mm -mm. Mm -mm. there is a basis why we do care mm -mm. right and i think that is also true mm -mm. no with mm -mm. our uh, friends from the institute of mm -mm. clinical laboratory sciences that you know everything is actually a linkage no? like we are only as strong as mm -hmm. the weakest link no, in this um, interaction so to speak and right now i think we're running out of time so this is the portion where we uh, share what are your plans and preparations for the mid-year for the incoming school year and please walk us through the process of admission no? do you have uh, qualifying examinations do you have interviews do you have essays to be submitted please talk about it let's start with director fajardo um i think in the in the allied health sciences, including nursing, no, uh, we are the only college who did not participate in a full face-to-face, -face, except for our internship. Mm -hmm. And it's still blended. Okay, We yeah. have our online and we have our face-to-face uh, -face, uh, duty. But we will be shifting that mm -hmm. in the coming school year, wow. Okay, starting with the internship. We'll be starting earlier this June. And uh, it's going to be a full face-to-face. -face. But of course, we have a backup. backup we plan. will be Planning. blending it <laughs> with, you know, <laughs> online classes right. just in case, yes. you know, because we are still in the pandemic. No? So when it comes to admission, because we're still planning also to do Is it open now? 
face-to-face, -face, yes. I think uh, one of the member of the administration's committee, which is beside me, <laughs> can talk more on that. Please, yes, with the honor, sir. Yes, sir. So actually, we are now starting with our pre-admission uh, requirements or process. So uh, the deadline supposedly is June 24, but we are extending it um, okay. uh, on the first week of July since a lot of um, schools are not yet done with their academic mm -hmm. year. So just to share a quick um, um, guidelines on our uh, pre-admission process. So for the Institute of Clinical Laboratory Sciences, um, uh, the strands uh, that will be accepted is either STEM or STEAM track. Okay. That's number one. So they must be uh, STEAM or STEM track in senior high school. Uh, second one, uh, uh, we also need to. They also need to submit their report card. Mm. So uh, their general average for grade eleven and grade twelve should be eighty five percent or better. That's the second uh, requirement. Third one is uh, we will also be uh, looking into their individual subjects. So we have um, biology one and two, mm. chemistry one and two. We also have um, general mathematics, okay. uh, English one and two, and statistics and probability. So their grades on these um, subjects should also be 85% or better. Mm -hmm. So if they do pass these three requirements, so they are eligible for our pre-admission process okay then after that if they pass the pre-admission the admissions committee will contact them uh, for further requirements and also for the interview right. so uh, and if you want to know more about our admissions they can always visit our SU page and also our official page uh, we have the Institute of Clinical Laboratory Sciences Silliman University Facebook page right. wonderful thank you sir Leo how about for the College of Nursing Dean Yes, thank you. Uh, we are already accepting applicants for the next school year and we will close the uh, acceptance of applications on June 30. June 30. Mm. Yes. Okay, mark your calendars. <laughs> okay. And um, because there's a certain standard that we maintain in the College of Nursing, we accept applicants with uh, average grades of at least 85 okay. and no subject grade below 85 in all subjects mm -hmm. yes but we do accept shifties mm -hmm. and transferees as long as uh, they also meet the application requirements for grades so for for shifties especially those who did not come from the stem or the steam track mm -hmm. um, because some students had to take additional subjects like calculus mm -hmm. biology chemistry and physics right. Um, they would need to have uh, an average of at least 2.5 and no grade below 2 uh, for them to um, initially be considered as an applicant. And then if they have uh, submitted their application letter and they have met the grade requirement, they would be uh, informed that they need to pay for the uh, testing fee mm -hmm. and if they successfully uh, take their exams, then they would be scheduled for uh, ideally the face-to-face -face panel interview. Okay. And um, successful applicants will be informed uh, by August 1. August 1, okay. Yes. Then they can already start uh, enrollment. Okay, so dagang salamat, uh, Director Fajardo, Sir Leo, Celine, congratulations, of course, Dean Gino, for your time. So to end this, we'll have a fast talk, so you don't have to think too hard of the options we'll be giving to you. Let's start with um, Celine, Hibalag or Buglasan? Hibalag. Dean, summer or rainy days? I like rainy days. Sir Leo, honors day or graduation day? Graduation day. Ma'am Eve, day or night? Day. Dean, you know, a night owl or early bird? Early bird. Celine, mornings or afternoons? Afternoons. Sir Leo, is it love or career? Oh my gosh, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, there should be balance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I believe. Both. 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 Okay. <laughs> Ma'am Eve, Palawan or Boracay? Dean Gino, what do you think are the three best spots or places here in Silliman University? 
Mm, the amphitheater. Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. The church. Two. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the uh, SU Hall. Yeah, three. Thank you. Celine, complete the sentence. Silman University College of Nursing is... Excellent. Excellent. Dean Fajardo, Institute of Clinical Laboratory Sciences is... Katuso. <laughs> Katuso. <laughs> okay, I think this goes for um, all of them. Describe Silliman in one word. Dean. Christian school. Christian school. Competent. Competence. Best. Global. Uh, warning. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dean, and of course to our faculty, and of course to our student, and we have now come to the last segment of the show. It's called Hashtag WTP Word to Ponder. Ron, what's your word to ponder for this episode? Josh, since we are um, in the presence of healthcare providers, uh -huh. I'd like to ponder on the word care. Okay. C for compassion, A for altruism, I... R for responsibility, <laughs> and E for empathy because all these things must be embodied by a healthcare mm. provider and because of that word care it can save lives and th and that is the reason why they are here with us today how about you Josh what is your word I'd like to wonder? pick up the word that was mentioned by Celine it's heart mm -hmm. I mean heartfelt mm -hmm. and I think because that's the thing that makes our um, College of Nursing, ICLS, really stand out from the rest because mm -hmm. yes, we're offering health services, but the unique part of us is that we do it you know, from the heart. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the brand of Silliman Education, that's the brand of really following the steps of the Via Veritas mm -hmm. Vita, being able to serve with competence, character and faith because everything stems from the heart. And I think that's the bottom line. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining our episode tonight, and to God be the glory. Hey there, Salamanians! Thank you for continuously supporting Hashtag Siliman. Support also our Facebook page. It's called Hashtag Siliman. And we do have a YouTube channel. It's called Hashtag Siliman. Please click the notification bell for you to be updated with our recent posts. See you there. And please don't forget to catch us at Phil Products Channel 6 every Monday at 8 p.m. And replays will be shown every Tuesday before the Noontime News and every Saturday after the Noontime News. This has been Ronalyn Faith by Losses. And Joshua Soldivillo, Kira Kids, next week, only here on Hashtag, Hashtag Cinema. Cinema.